Hi, it's Paul Hill from ITFlee.com, and in this lesson, I want to teach you more about the group policy objects which are commonly referred to as GPOs. Now these contain settings and configurations that can be applied to users or computers that are stored in Active Directory. A domain can contain several GPOs and you will almost never see a domain that contains only one GPO. It's also important to understand that one individual GPO can be linked or applied to multiple OUs simultaneously. Now let me demonstrate that here. So if I go to itfleet.com in group policy management, and we have two GPOs in our domain. If I expand this group policy objects folder here, you can see that we have the de default domain policy and the default domain controllers policy. Now let's say, for example, I wanted to link the default domain controllers policy to this OU IT fleet. The way you would do that is right click on the OU and choose link an existing GPO. And then we would select default domain controllers policy. I would just click OK. And now we can see we have the GPO applied to the IT fleet OU and the domain controllers OU. Now, if we go under group policy objects, we still only have the two GPOs created, but they've been linked in more than one spot. Now, just to delete that link, we can right click on it and choose delete. And it's gonna say, do you want to delete this link? This will not delete the GPO itself. We'll click okay. And now that link has been deleted, but again, if we go under the group policy objects, we can still see the GPO is still in the domain. GPOs are used in a modular sense, meaning that an administrator might create several GPOs and apply them to OUs as needed. For example, you could create a GPO that installs Flash Player that contain computers which would need Adobe Flash Player installed. Or you could create a GPO that prevents users from launching Internet Explorer, and you could link that GPO to all the OUs where you don't want users to be able to run Internet Explorer. Creating a GPO is very similar to creating a user account or organizational unit in Active Directory. You simply need to right click on the domain or OU and choose create a GPO in this domain and link it here. So if we wanted to create a GPO under the root of our domain, I would right click on itflea.com and I would say create a GPO in this domain and link it here. Again, as you've already seen, we can link an existing GPO if we would like. What we're gonna do is just create a new GPO and we're gonna call this test GPO. Now, if we had source starter GPOs, we could select them here. We don't have any. So I'm just gonna click okay. And now we can see the new GPO has been created and linked to itflea.com. And if we go under the group policy objects, we can see that we have three group policy objects in our domain. We can right click on this GPO and there's a number of things we can do. We can edit the GPO, we can enforce it, meaning it will take precedence over other GPOs. We can uncheck this link enabled, which if we click that, we can see it's kind of hard to tell, but the icon goes a little bit lighter. And that means that the GPO is not going to be applied to this domain or anywhere at all. It's still linked to it, but none of the settings will take effect. So I'll right click and I'll choose link enabled again. We can save a report of the GPO if we would like, but there's no settings in there to see. So we're not gonna do that. If you wanted to see that, we could right click on the default domain policy, choose save report. And we can save it to something like the desktop uh, just to, so we can get an understanding of how this works. So we'll say default domain policy, we'll save it. And if we go to our desktop, We'll open this HTML file. We'll make this full screen. And now we can see there is a report displaying all the configuration settings of our default domain policy. That is the same as clicking on the GPO and clicking on settings. Now we can see here that it's opening Internet Explorer and it's saying, you know, do you trust this? We're going to hit close. And we can see the exact same settings uh, here as well. So you don't have to save a report if you want to view the settings. Okay. If we'd like, we can make additional changes to the view. We can change some of the columns, the reporting, and just some general settings that we, if we would like, we're not going to do any of that right now. Uh, you can create a new view from here, which I've never ever had one scenario where I wanted to do this because I'll, I'll demonstrate what it does. So if we click on new view from here, it only shows that GPO and it gives you the same exact set of options over here on the right hand side of the screen. So to get out of this view, you just click the little X up here and now we're returned to a much more functional view. Uh, we can also delete the link. The reason why we're not deleting the GPO is because we're clicking on a link, not the GPO itself. We can rename, refresh if changes have been made and we can get help. Now nine times out of 10, if you need help, you can go on Google or you can message me directly and I'll be happy to help you. Th these help files are only so useful. A lot of times you can't find what you're looking for 
So my go-to is just Google if I need help with something. I just type in what I want to do or, or what issues I'm having and I'm able to fix it. Okay, so now you understand how to link GPOs, delete links, create them. Let's learn more about the settings that are inside of a GPO. Let's right click on our test GPO and choose edit. Now the group policy management editor will appear and this is where you can make your configuration changes to your GPOs. Now we see we have two types of configuration, computer and user. And this is so important because I, I see a lot of people who struggle to understand what exactly is going on here. Let me explain. Computer configurations will only be applied to computer objects and the user configuration will only be applied to user objects within Active Directory. So if this GPO is applied to an OU that only contains computers and you make changes under the user configuration, none of the settings will be applied to those objects. The same goes for computers. If you apply this GPO to an OU that only contains users and you make changes under the computer configuration, none of the settings will be applied to those user accounts. Understanding the difference between these two configurations is extremely important. And like I said, I see a lot of system administrators make changes under the computer configuration, like setting a desktop background, and then they link the GPO to an OU that only contains user accounts. And this will not work. All right, so now what we need to cover is how to delete the actual object. So we're gonna pop out of this editor and we're gonna have another lesson that will go more into the actual settings of the GPOs. Right now, what you can do is right click and choose delete. We're gonna see this message saying you're only gonna delete the link itself. And it says, this will not delete the GPO, but only the link. So I'm gonna click cancel because I wanna show you how to delete the GPO itself and not the link. So under the group policy objects, if we click this drop down, we can see that the test GPO is listed here. If we right click on this GPO, we can choose delete. And now we get a different message. It says, do you want to delete this GPO and all links to it in this domain? It also says it will not delete the links in other domains. We don't have any other domains, we only have this one. So we'll click yes. We can see that the link has been deleted up here as well as in the group policy object. So that GPO has been deleted. So now you understand how to create GPOs, how to link them to a use. You understand how to edit them and delete the GPOs. There's a lot more to learn about group policy and group policy objects. So I look forward to teaching you in the next lessons.